Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss convertible bonds. When you think about convertible bonds, the first thing should come to your mind is Tesla. Tesla is the poster child of convertible bonds and I will show you why in a moment. So what is the big idea of convertible bonds? Well, simply put, the bondholders, the people that lend money to the company, they have the right, not the obligation to exchange, basically switch themes switch the bonds into stocks at a given ratio. And sometimes they might have a restrictive period. For example, you have to wait two, three, four, five, six years. But at some point you will be able to give us your bond if you choose and we'll give you instead a certain amount of stocks. So simply put, when you invest in a bond, you are buying the bond plus you are buying a convertible feature. Now, what, why do we need to learn about convertible bonds? Well, because convertible bonds are considered dilutive securities. What are dilutive securities? Dilutive securities are securities that could potentially decrease earnings per share. It means if the bondholders do convert, what's going to happen? The number of common stock will go up. As a result, earnings per share will go down because now you need to distribute the profit to more shares. We'll talk about this EPS later. I just want you to understand what is dilutive securities. And you need to understand that convertible bonds are dilutive. Now, why do companies like Tesla offer those type of bonds well one thing is raise money at a low interest rate and let me show you test what tesla did tesla just kind of to give you an idea how much at what rate they were borrowing money by issuing convertible bond tesla was able to get away with offering its investor a low coupon a very low coupon for example they were borrowing money for seven years in February 20, 2014, that's maturing March 1st, 2021, offering investors 1.25, and its five-year convertible was even offering the investors 0.25%. Practically, they were paying investors zero. Practically, 0.25 is practically zero, if you ask me, for a five-year borrowing. So simply put, you give your money to Tesla in 2014, and they pay you 0.25. However, the deal with Tesla was once that bonds mature, the convertible feature will kick in. So the reason is they want to raise money at a low rate. That's one reason. Entice potential investors. Guess what? You're, you don't want to buy our stock now. Just we're going to give you a chance to buy it later. We're going to entice you by giving you this option to switch. Also, when we sell bonds, we don't give up control. The company don't give up control. Simply put, the current shareholders don't give up more control than necessary. And this is what Tesla did. They raised the money in 2014, used the money to produce cars, at the same time, the current shareholders did not give up any ownership. From an accounting perspective, we need to deal with three issues when it comes to convertible bonds. When we issue them, when we convert them, and that could include inducement, and when we retire them. Now, the good news about if you're a Tesla holder, let's assume you did buy those shares, those convertible shares, and you were getting 0.25%, which is a very, very low yield, practically nothing. If you did hold them, you would realize an 800% profit by March 1st, 2021, when those bonds mature. Simply put, if you invested a dollar, you made $800. And let me tell you, this is a great investment. So the individuals, institutions that did take that deal, did a great, you know, made really great, 800%. It's a lot of return. Basically, if you invested a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars, multiply it by 800% and you will see the effect. Think about investing 50,000 or 100,000. But that's beside the point. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to look at the accounting aspect of convertible bonds. But before we look at the accounting concept of convertible bond, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course for that matter. I'm simply a useful addition to your CPA review course, a useful addition to your accounting course. I help CPA candidate and accounting students do better perform better. As a result, you'll have a better accounting career. You move on with your life. If not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. This is a partial list of all the accounting courses that I cover. Intermediate, advanced, governmental, basic, managerial, cost, you name it, with, with resources such as lectures, PowerPoint slides, uh, notes, which is PowerPoint slide notes, multiple choice questions. My CPA material is aligned with your 
Becker, Wiley, Roger, and Gleam. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions. Those are actual CPA exam questions. I kept them in their original format with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. Share it with other. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So the best way to learn about convertible bond is to actually look at an example. Let's assume Adam Company issues 1,000 bonds and each bond is $1,000. Those bonds are convertible into into the company $1, $1 par value common stock at a rate of five stock for each bond. So we issued 1,000 bond and each bond can be converted into five stocks. The bonds were issued originally at 103 or, or, or 103%. It means it was it was issued at a premium. Let's take a look at the journal entry when we issued the bond. Cash, 1,030,000, which is a million dollar because we're issuing 1,000 bonds. Each bond is $1,000 times 103%. We're gonna credit bonds payable a million dollar, that's the face value of the bonds, and we have a premium of 30,000. So notice, it's like issuing a regular bond. We don't care about the convertible feature, we simply ignore the convertible feature when we issue the bond. Now, let's assume the bondholder converted, let's assume one person, bought this bond, converted the bond when the remaining unamortized premium was 10,000. So the bondholder decided to convert those bonds. Convert, convert those bonds. What do we have to do? Well, we, if, if we convert the bond, we have to remove the bond and we have to remove any remaining premium. Let's do that. So we debit the bond, we debit the premium. What's gonna happen in return, the company will have to issue the stocks. Well, for each bond, you issue five stocks, we're gonna be issuing 5,000 stocks. 5,000 stocks, the par value is a dollar, 5,000 times a dollar, we credit common stock for 5,000, and the remainder will be 1 million and 5,000, that's a plug, basically paid in capital. Notice, we did not recognize a gain, nor we recognize a loss on the conversion. Now, the, the, the holder of the bond, the bond holder, that's a different story, whether they experience a gain or a loss, that's a different story, but the company itself, we don't have a gain or a loss, and we call this the book value method. Simply put, we're not going to record a gain or a loss from exchanging our bonds into stocks. Now, let's assume instead, Adam offered the bondholder a sweetener of $70,000 to convince that bondholder, like we're gonna assume it's one bondholder or many, it doesn't matter, to convert. So what happened is sometimes the company will, we, we, we would want the, the bondholder, to, all the bondholders to convert. What do we do? We'll tell them, look, if you convert, we'll give you some extra cash. Now, why do we do that? Why do companies do that sometimes? It's because they don't want to keep paying the interest. They want the bondholder to convert. So what do you do? You convince them. You convince them how? Offering them an incentive cash. So here's what's gonna happen. The retirement will be the same. So it's the same way we retire the bond, um, same way they convert the bond, they convert the bond. And you have to understand that inducement we have to pay that additional 70,000, it will be counted as an expense. Simply put, all what you need to know, we expense the inducement. If that's the case, it's an expense. Well, let's see what happened if Adam purchased the bonds for 102, 102%. Well, if that's the case, we're gonna have to figure out whether we have a gain or a loss, but at the same time, we have to remove the bond because we bought back the bond. So we have to debit the bond, credit, debit the bond, payable, debit the premium to remove the bond. And we paid, 100, uh, 1 million and 20,000. Now we have to find out whether we have a gain or a loss. Well, how do we do that? Well, the face value of the bond is a million. The unamortized amount is 10,000. So the carrying value of a premium bond is 1 million and 10,000. You need to know how to compute the carrying value of a premium bond. Now, we paid 1 million and 20 for a bond that's worth 1 million and 10. Well, the difference is 10,000. So we have a loss at 10,000. Now the premium and the loss, they happens to be the same. It's a coincidence. They have, they're not related to each other. What you need to understand is this. Any price paid above 1.01 .01 is a loss because any price paid above 1 million and 10,000, Adam Company will have a loss. Now, what's the best way to learn more about this? Go to farhatlectures.com, work multiple choice questions, look at additional resources. Invest in your CPA, invest in your accounting career. Don't shortchange yourself. I can help you do better. Good luck, study hard, give me a chance, and stay safe.